Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Please make sure that you look on the dashboard. On the dashboard, you can find individual videos that I always strive to label clearly so you can know exactly what a video is about. But over the years, I've noticed that one video can contain so much. There are many different pieces of prophecies inside each video. However, I'm always true to theme. So whatever the title is, that prophecy will always talk about the main thing. But the Spirit of the Lord has given me grace to be able to weave into one prophecy many other prophecies that are related. And so with the Lord moving very quickly, um, I would recommend look on the dashboard and look for the playlist. There's Russia and China. That is the most important playlist on the master's voice. I always try to remember to say it. Russia and China is the most important because Russia and China is going to be the end of the United States. That is God's chosen ending for what is going to happen to this nation. There is the America playlist that is a list of America's sins. There is the sin series, which is extremely important because many people continue to nurse small weaknesses in their lives. And it is extremely unfortunate because there's not good teaching in the churches. There's not good teaching in the Bible studies. And many of the, many of those who lead God's people have decided to settle at a level of complacency by telling God's people that a little bit of sin is not so bad because God is such a loving God, a gentle person, such a forgiving person that he understands that we struggle with sin. And yet look at the way God interacted with Israel. God knew that they were human just like us, but nobody in Israel ever said, you cannot find it in the Bible where it says, but we're only human. They never approached God that way because in those days to fail at keeping God's so many laws that God had, so many laws concerning how they were to live and how they were to intermarry and how they were not to intermingle and how they were to control their communities and raise their children and even dealing with their physical bodies. So many laws, they did not dare to breach those things because in those days, the penalty for breaching those things was death. We no longer have this instant judgment from God. Now we have an age where God through Christ Jesus has extended to us perfect grace. Jesus Christ is grace bodily. He is the grace of God himself extended to us. But the problem is that we have become a culture, a people, and this is internationally who abuse grace. We think that God always owes us one more shot. We think that our lowest base level of trying is enough. And whenever we are challenged to rise higher, we get confronted. And when we get confront confronted, we get combative, we get angry, we get upset, and we begin to lash out at the place that is telling us that the false God of the pastors is not real and that you are not going to spend your final moments standing before that false God. You are not going to be standing before the another Jesus of the false gospel of America that has permeated the world, the permissive grace, the acceptable base level. That's not who's going to judge you. We're going to be judged by the word, who is Christ? And when we don't come up to the level that is required, first of all, the standard of righteousness, faith and the confession of it, that we know that Jesus Christ is Lord, that we have put our faith in him and accepted him as master over our lives. But then also we have cleansed our robes, cleanse your robes, O sinners. We have torn our hearts with repentance and stood before the Lord. It will be very difficult to defend the things that some of us defend here on earth because they think they're interacting with a person now and they do not know that they're interacting with me in my role as the mouthpiece of the Lord. You argue with a person now, but when you die, I will be standing on the side waiting for my moment and you will be standing there not only having to justify the life that you lived, but then also having to justify why you rejected the truth when it came. The sin series is there to wake God's people up that we are not supposed to be interacting with, loving, hiding, or making excuses for sin in our lives. There's a supernatural playlist and all these things, including the, um, the 2020 um, reset. I have about almost 
25 videos on that, but they're no longer hosted on YouTube for obvious reasons. They are on my BitChute channel, Rumble channel, Brighton channel, and I think those are just called the Master's Voice blog. I think that's what those are called. But if you if you go to any of those channels, that's you can look for the name in the search box there, or you can simply look in the description box below and get all information about the channel, all information about each prophecy. It will take you back to the blog www.the-masters-voice.com where you can always go back and read every message. It will always have a title. It will always have a date. And the date on every message is the date that I received it, not the date that I posted it. So you can see something labeled June 19, 2016 that is only posted in 2019. It's not a 2019 prophecy. It is a... 2016 prophecy. And so today we will be talking about some of the things that lay the most strain upon my heart. Oh, also there is a very excellently translated Spanish language channel that has been going for, I think a year and a half now. It is called La Voz del Señor. So those who speak Spanish, you can go to that channel. Please share that channel because the work there is extremely extraordinary and you can share it to those further afield um, Spanish speaking community here in the USA and outside. And so the title of this prophecy, this is a very recent word because God is going all over the place. God is talking about the beast system controlled by apps. God is saying, train up your children in the way that they should go. Why? Because it still goes back to the beast system. If you do not train your children not to lust after the uh, Iron Man enhancements that are coming, then what will happen is you will come home one day and put the grocery down and your son will be waiting with one normal eye and one red eye like Terminator and your heart will be broken because once he goes and does that, then there's no coming back from that. A lot of people are afraid. Celestial, I had my hip replaced. Celestial, I had my elbow replaced. Am I a humanoid? I shared. And this is why the transhumanism prophecies are there. Transhumanism is a philosophy, a spiritual satanic rot that starts in the heart first. It is the desire to transcend humanism. Literally, you want to be more than the man, woman that you are born. You want to be more than a normal teen. You want to be a teen with wings because the video game has told you, uh, internal international flight part one, two, and three video game, if there is such a thing, has told you that being a teen with wings on your back like Angel from the X-Men is better than being human. That is transhumanism. It must be rooted in the lust to defeat death, to defeat old age, to defeat God himself, to say that I will transcend the godly order, I shall be more. Is anyone hearing the voice of Lucifer in this? I will ascend to the heights. I will rise to the sides of the north. I will set my throne above the most high. See this person's pride. It was not enough that he says, no, I want to set up a throne next to God. No, I will set up my throne above God. Transhumanism is the voice of Satan speaking in the earth, like through that emaciated Yuval, what's his name, person face. It is saying that God's design is faulty, that God's design of man for a woman is faulty, that what is good for a man is a robot sex doll person being who is not alive, but who is animated through a demonic AI that they will put in her so that she can predict her partner's needs. And those who are not wise will feel she is better than a wife. She never asked for anything and she costs way less. She was a one-time payment. That's transhumanism, to want to fuse yourself with what is not godly. So if you have a hip replacement or knee replacement, you don't need to keep asking unless you went in there thinking that you were going to become one of the Avengers when you change the hip or the knee. But if that was not the intention of your heart, then there's no need to fear. Transhumanism, when you see it in action, trust me, you will know it. And so we come to this thing. The name of this prophecy is UFOs and Aliens Attack. 
I had this dream on March the 20th and I was not going to share this dream because it really put strain on my heart and I just thought, well, this one's for me. But this morning, because of the heaviness of heart that I was feeling, today is March the 26th, 2023, Sunday, March the 26th, 2023. And since I woke up this morning, there's such a heaviness upon me, such a heaviness on my heart. And that heaviness is directly related to this Aurora Borealis thing that is just living its best life all over the all over the world. People are putting comments on the posts from everywhere, from Scotland, from all over America, from Australia. And I'm thinking all I need is one person from Sierra Leone to say, oh yes, we saw the Aurora too. So we can truly be at that time. And I was pondering in my heart, Lord, why? Lord, why is this thing happening so fast? What does that mean for us? I wasn't addressing him directly. I was just thinking it in my mind. And then the Lord spoke to me and I will get to that. But for now, this dream came before this heaviness. And the reason I'm sharing this dream is because when I was feeling heavy, God said certain things to me. And then he told me, go ahead and share that dream so that they can understand. And what he told me when I put the camera on was tell them to come away from everything that involves Satan. Tell them to come away from everything that involves Satan. People of God, nothing happens without something. So nothing happens for nothing. Everything is connected to everything else. When you hear the Holy Spirit say, come away from Satan, Here's the challenge. I'll bring a prophecy saying that God wants us to sanctify the vessel. So I'll be preaching in the heat of my spirit, like prophet Elijah. And then someone out there will listen to everything and say, I agreed with everything until she mentioned smoking. And why will that person make a comment like that? Because smoking is the monkey on that person's back. So they're able to listen to purity, and if that's not their problem, they're fine. They agree. And they're able to listen to coming away from crystal meth and fentanyl and everything else. And if, that, if that's not the monkey on their back, then they agree. They agree that homosexuality is not the best for society and that men should not be jumping into the pool and winning, winning, winning all the swimming awards. They agree. But then when the Spirit of the Lord is moving through the earth, to cleanse his people and try and wash them, then someone will, will start bleating and saying, well, I agree, but I don't think that smoking is bad. I agree, but I don't actually think she understands the full range of the uses that we've found for weed. So what happens is God's people want to pick and choose among the sins to see which sins must be swept out with alacrity with speed, but then which sins we can keep a little bit close because we don't agree. And what you don't understand is this. In the spirit, there's something called spiritual integrity. This is not integrity as I won't lie, I won't steal, I take the scout's honor. That's not it. Integrity, the builders and engineers know, is the structural soundness of a building. So integrity means that from the foundation to the roof, it's been built with such skill that it will be able to weather a landslide, a mudslide, an earthquake, and a tsunami. Because it's been built, the house can stand. When you entertain sin in your life in any way, you lack spiritual integrity. You have holes. You have entry points. You have weaknesses. Imagine Satan as a very, very evil person with a huge baseball bat going and circling around your entity. Imagine yourself standing here like a clay man with a weakness in the shoulder, with a weakness in the lower back, with a weakness at your mouth, with a weakness for the porn, with a weakness or the fact that all your friends are gossips and you can't seem to separate yourself from them. No matter how many videos you watch, amen, celestial, you touched my heart, sister, and then you go right back to that gathering of crows, to ch 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 And Satan is walking around the edifice of your house seeking whom to devour because the Bible told you long ago that he is a roaming lion. Roaming lion means one that is never still. It is always seeking fresh prey. 
And then the Lord didn't say a roaming lion that is looking to sniff out weakness. He said devour, which means when the weakness has been sniffed out, after that comes the tearing out of the prey's throat. So Satan is walking around with that bat, tossing it up and down in his hands, like these huge guys at the nightclubs. And when he sees your weak shoulder, when he sees your weak eyes, he will strike them very hard. The sin that you make excuses for will destroy you in the last days because it will no longer be that the lion will roam. The Bible says that the enemy is raging because he knows his time is short. What do people do when they're in a hurry? They tend to try and do and get all they want. If you're late with your kids, you tend to throw everything into the bag and just hope you didn't forget anything. Throw all the kids into the car and hope you didn't forget one. And then you hit the gas because you are a busy person with a lot to do. That is exactly how the lawnmower of the devil will be moving through the church first. Judgment comes to the house of God first. And the first houses to go down will be the fornicating houses and the masturbating houses and the pastors who use porn as a filler for when their wives aren't feeling that good that day. Houses with no structural integrity will fall. So if the best that the houses out there can do is to defend their weaknesses instead of going to fall before Jesus and say, this woman's mouth keeps striking me on the shoulder, but I accept it. It is good oil for my head because she's not carrying a bat. She's only using the Lord's rod. When Satan comes with his bat, he won't tap you. He will break it. And just like the hero that they kill in a lot of these movies who goes down after one hit too many, that is how many of the houses that claim they are the Lord's houses are going to go down. So it, it is really worth it to take a look at yourself because these aliens are coming for the structural integrity of the houses. You like bright lights, you like viewing parties outside, they're for you. You like vivid sunsets and oh my goodness, this is astonishing, the nimbulous, cumulus, lenticular, they are for you. You like the appearances of fiery angels as I spoke about in one prophecy, the angel that had the guts and the gall to manifest here on the ground, here on earth, enveloped in a cloud of glorious fire, blazing white robe in there. And my whole soul said, go not near. And I did not go near, but people were taking their very little children outside to gaze upon that sight of something inside fire appearing like Michael or Gabriel, but not. These angels sinned against God. They were cast out of heaven. Their punishment was corruption. Did the scripture tell us anywhere that their beauty was taken? Did the scripture say, and they fell, but at the door, their manifestation card was taken away, their white robe card. If those things were taken away, why does the Bible say beware? Because even Satan appeareth as the angel of light. Life and death will turn upon spiritual integrity, discernment, obedience. The Lord says, don't go outside. Well, you know, I just have to let the animals out. Go and let them out. That will be on your tombstone. She had to let the animals out. This dream is concerning the destructive nature of the creatures that call themselves aliens, who will introduce themselves as peacemakers to the world. So I dreamt that I lived in a mixed residential area. There were the nice houses that have, excuse me, please. There were the nice houses that have very wide yards. You can park the car in there and there's space for the kids' bikes and the pets are inside this fence area. And then there were the houses that are equally at nice, but they don't have, um, they don't have yards. They face right onto the street. And so the cars for those owners are parked up and down the sides of the street. And then there were the rest of us who live in apartments, mixed level apartments. Nothing was over 10 stories. So all of it was mid-level, middle, sometimes four stories, sometimes eight stories, highest was 10, and it was just a mixed residential. And it was my habit to, uh, there was a school 
small stores, no big business district. So this was a residential area, no sign of industry or anything. And I had a very big kitchen window and I used to just eat breakfast at that kitchen window. Excuse me. I used to eat breakfast at that kitchen window, watching people, taking their children to the school, watching people on their way to work, on their way to the train, on their way to the bus, driving past the cars in the intersection. And I, I would just, it was my habit to wake up early, have my breakfast at that window and watching life. But one day, this ordinary scene that I would watch every morning changed so suddenly, changed for the worst, and before you know it, I was standing at this huge window watching scenes of total mayhem, scenes of people panicking and screaming due to a chain of events that no one could have predicted. My window turned into something like a big TV screen showing me things that I did not want to see and I was not prepared to see at all that day. So I was saying it's a good thing to have a routine because your routine might save you one day. Those who stick to a routine, you might find that God will tell you, like he told the 9-11 people, some of them who are survivors, do not go to work. And because they obeyed him and they changed the routine, their lives were saved. I woke up early and I did all the things that I normally do. And so as a result, I was not like some of the poor people who got trapped in their homes in the stream and got hurt and got killed because of what was going on. So I'm looking out the window and I'm having breakfast and everything is happening as normal outside. And I see a glint of metal in the sky, up, up in the sky. Now, this thing that I saw wasn't making any sound. It wasn't making any noise. And so if I had not seen it, and this is probably just God, if I had not seen it, then it might've escaped my attention altogether. And I might've been as clueless as the people on the ground were, but I did see it. And I fixed my eyes on it and I saw, I will do my best to describe, but it is hard. I saw something, it had no bump. Some of them I've seen have bumps. This had no bump. It was flat like this. So my hands are not perfect, but just try to imagine that it's a circle, a flat circle. And it looked like a, a single hole. So it had no line that you can see here. It looked just like one Frisbee on top of another Frisbee, perfectly fused into a silver disc. And the disc looked no bigger than the size of a dinner plate. So it looked um, the size of a snack plate, actually, the middle plate. That's how big it looked. And I watched as this thing descended straight down out of a cloud. It was a beautiful blue sky and the clouds were not stationary. But this one came out of a cloud that was right above it. And it came down, 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 down until we could say that it was closer to Earth than the sky. It was close enough that you could just look and see this thing was there. And then the disc separated. So from the perfectly fused solid hole, like a round flat Frisbee, all of a sudden it separated the top bit and the bottom bit. And in this space in between came spikes. So all of a sudden you find, I'll just show you my hands like this. You find spikes like this, but placed this way with the top hovering here and the bottom hovering beneath it. They separated and then something like spikes was in the middle. And these spikes began to turn slowly, turn slowly. So they began to rotate around and around and then around and around and around and they began to gather speed. Spinning like that, spinning like that. And then when I looked, there was an explosion on the ground at the foundation of a building that was on my row. So I just saw poof like this and cement went flying. And when that cement was hit, it disintegrated. So it did not form chunks and then fall down the way we sometimes see when there's an earthquake, the building will collapse. But when you look, all the building's pieces are right there. You can see, okay, that's the main piece front door. No, there was nothing. The building was hit on its base. And when it was hit, it turned to smoky cement dust. There was nothing there. And the building sustained a huge hole at the bottom. And the people in the street, street went, whoa, you know how people would, some would instinctively duck, people dove behind cars. Instantly there was a reaction from the people walking in the street. And so that first building got hit 
and I looked in shock from the explosion on the ground back to that thing up there. And it was gathering even more momentum and spinning and spinning and spinning. And then I never saw anything come out of that disc. So I'll just make it clear. I didn't see any ray of light. I didn't see any laser. I didn't see any beam. I didn't see any any trajectory, anything tangible to say that came from that thing up there. It just began to spin and all of a sudden there was an explosion on the ground. And then all of a sudden, pow, another building, this time directly across the street from me, suffered a hit at the ground level. And because the hit on this second building was so big, the building went from like this to this. It tilted because a huge chunk of it a huge part of the structural integrity was absolutely destroyed and the building began to lean dangerously. And the people outside were now screaming in terror at seeing this kind of explosion and screaming in terror for the people. And the people in the building, everybody who was still there at home also began to scream. So there's outside screams, inside screams. And now people were afraid and they started to pour out of buildings instead of staying in the buildings, which I think was a very good move. Um, long story short, because of other things that I saw, they were running out of the buildings. And at that time, the disc, not the top or the bottom, the spinning spikes in the middle, the spinning spikes had reached such a high spin that all these spikes were no longer single like this. They just formed one solid piece, like a spinning blade in between those two hovering pieces. And I now knew without a shadow of a doubt, whether I could see rays, I knew that that thing up there spinning was causing the strikes on the ground. And then the strangest thing happened. I began to predict which building would get hit next just like I was newscasting and I was saying it out loud, newscasting about 10 or so seconds before each explosion. So I was saying the next building to go, it's like I was talking to God and I was saying the next building to go is that cream five-story building that is two blocks away over here, over there, the one that I can only see the top, top corner and then pow, something would hit the building and the top of the building just exploded. And like I said, all that was there is dust, cement dust, no piece, no anything. When it was hit, that whole piece was gone. And then I ducked behind the chicken, the, the, the kitchen Island. So I ducked down and then I still kept podcasting. And I said, the next one is that small little house with a red porch. And then pow, that house was blown in on the entire side. And so by now the crowd downstairs was it was as big as a soccer match. There were so many people gathered, but only a few of them, only some of them had seen the object. People were just so scared at these explosions going off like that without any visible sign of why these buildings were being struck. And some people who saw the thing began to scream, somebody do something about that thing up there. But the majority of people were not looking up. They were looking at the mysteriously exploding buildings they were crying, they were exclaiming, they were making exclamations of fear and concern because the people who were stuck in the buildings could not get out because of the collapsed walls. And inside my house now, I moved from only not only predicting, but I picked up a side plate and I began to speak exactly like I do when I'm making these videos. I held the side plate in front of me and I said, this object from my perspective appears to be no bigger than this side plate you're looking at. And I said, but in the sky, it must be many times bigger because there is quite a distance between my window and where it is. The building on my street is next and then pow. And at that moment, it was as if rationality came to me. And I thought in my heart, Celestial, what are you doing? And then I realized that it's now. This is the day. The day has now come. This is the last time you're going to sleep in this house because you've been making videos and you've been speaking the word of the Lord, but now it has come to the point where you are now going to live out, live in the world of all the things that you have said, just as God has always told me. When people come here, how do we know you're from the Lord and everything? Well, some people will just not find out because you won't be there. You will not be able to go the whole way. Maybe it will be God's will. Maybe it will be your own fault, but the Lord has always told me, you will see your prophecies come to pass. Now it's one thing when he's talking about Russia and China, and I've always said that a Russian soldier is a human being. A Chinese soldier is a human being. 
the way that people focus more on political prophecies and prophecies that involve people, and they literally, it is only a small group who seem to care when I do these extraterrestrial, when I do these return of the giants, return of the giants that are inside the mountains, all these mountains in these countries that never get defrosted, mountains that have open mouth volcano tops that have centuries of snow inside them. The snow has piled up all from the base of the mountain in the tummy of the mountain all the way up. And people just think it's a mountain. There are giants inside those mountains. It amazes me when people care more about well, who's coming to power and who's next and we're going to see who, who comes and then we'll, people care more about that than hearing that 12 and 15 foot and taller things are going to be on the street with us. So I realized the time has come now that God has always told you it is outside for real. And I seem to snap out of it. And I went to my basics bag and I grabbed it. I added a few more things to it. I grabbed my laptop. I took some water. I put the bag on my back. And then I went down to the street and I went past all those people because the rays were not hitting people, which is why I said earlier, it seems to be a good thing that people came outside because it was those who were in the buildings who were being harmed. And I just started jogging lightly, just heading somewhere. And later in the dream, I ended up um, in the underground. So it's that part of the city, this New York, that is not so nice, a part that I have never been to ever. But I somehow ended up there. And I said, it looks just like all the other underground in the movies where you've escaped the first part of the movie and now you're in the underground and you're just trying to find that one special guy who has the answers. And that's the dream I had. And I woke up from that dream. And so today I was not meditating on the dream. I was thinking of all these auroras. I was thinking, Lord, when people start saying that they can see the aurora in South America, when they start saying that they can see the aurora in Papua New Guinea, then what? And he said, share that recent dream that you had and tell them that the angels are coming to destroy mercilessly among the people. Whoever will receive them, they will destroy. They are masters of subterfuge and disguise. They can cloak themselves to appear human. They can look like your own family member. It is a favorite trick of theirs. They can look like a humble child or a lost youth that is in need of help. They can even look like an elder in need of assistance, and I'm going to speak on this elder business. But you do not want to meet these things in their false form, and you should stay away from them. The fallen ones are coming with their insatiable need to subjugate and devour flesh. And when they are among you on earth, they will destroy. So this spinning thing, I've shared... Um, it was very difficult for me to start this alien and UFO series. I really struggled to start this. And I think last on my list was because this is, this is an area, this is a theme that people always mock. This nation is so deep in the concept of mockery for what it doesn't understand. You tell them that things are living in the mountains and that God said they should stop going and camping and they'll be like, bless God, I've been camping since I was a, a little whippersnapper and I, I'll be all right. And then the next thing, they will just find your monogrammed boots and that's all your wife will get because people don't listen. You keep hearing that more and more experienced people who have been camping all their lives are going missing in the forest, a place that I have ne I've never felt the compulsion to go and look in the forest for anything that my ancestors did not lose there. But other people enjoy it, and that is fine. But now we have come to the point where it may be time to reconsider forest living because the forest is home to things that are bigger and hairier than yourself, things that do not eat Oreo cookies as food. They eat people. They have large footprints. They are just beyond the tree line, looking at families that are living there and feeling like the time has soon come. The Lord showed me the vision. I shared it. The time has soon come for them to come right up to where the fresh laundry is on the line and place a paw print high up enough on the clean bed sheet so that when the woman comes and sees that paw print, and looks down at where the ground is, she will know that there is no wolf, 
There is no fox. There is no bear that can stand upright like that and carefully place one paw on her fresh laundry. And the Lord said that these upright walking dog things and the other creatures will do it because they want the man of the house to know your wife is mine. The children are mine. Your life is mine. And any time I want to come and savage all of you, I will. This is why we need the protection of the Holy Spirit. This is why we not only need the protection of the Holy Spirit, but there's no point having the Holy Spirit's protection if you're going to go against it. If he will put a check on you and say don't, and then you'll say there was just that one thing I forgot at the store. And then we see you on the nightly news. God has shared that when these killings start, when these creatures, they are going to come into the city. I saw the dog creature standing in the city, in the alley. It was standing between two buildings and all I could see was the upright shape, the ears and the eyes. They will come into the city and do savage things. And the Lord said that people, the, the, the government is gonna lie and start saying it's a, it's a night stalker. They'll be selling us that it's a serial killer and the coroners will say, well, not, not, not quite, not so. So the Lord is saying that these fallen things, including fallen angels, are coming to destroy mercilessly among people. Whoever will receive them, they will destroy. This tells us that there are people who will unknowingly receive them. I shared the vision that God showed me of these unbelievably good-looking men that are not humans. All they do is go to the lounge spots and the club spots and make themselves profiles on Tinder and eHarmony. And they present themselves as men who either want a good time because they know we're in that time where all the young ladies also want a good time, no st strings attached, or they just do this swiping right, swiping right business. They go to the club and they will bring back as many as three girls and sleep with them. And then when the girls are sleeping, they get up and they go back to to another club and God said that these creatures, the fallen Nephilim are intent on spreading their seed in humankind. The Lord was warning and says, you that likes casual sex, you will pick up a belly full of what you didn't intend. And I shared in the prophecy about the fallen coming back is that when those pregnancies come in, I saw myself, God was using me to show what a woman will be like the belly was like iron. You will not be able to get rid of that Nephilim. It will lock itself in there. My belly was like the back of an armadillo, like the back of a turtle. It was like Kevlar. You couldn't punch that baby in there. You couldn't kick it. You couldn't do anything. You will not be able to cesarean it out. It will not come out. It will go full term and you will become the woman that has birthed the monstrous creature exactly like Esdras said. And that will be what you get for promiscuity to be the mother of Nephilim in the final times. He said that these things are masters of subterfuge and disguise, cloaking themselves to appear human. And if you watch the, um, the Nephilim playlist, I have talked about this many times, that not all the Nephilim are hideous. Not all the Nephilim sound like the creatures from Greek mythology, like the Minotaur that had the body of a man, a hugely muscled body of a man, and the head of a bull, which is this mixed creature thing, or the head of an eagle, or the head of a jackal, like Anubis, the Egyptian god of death. Some of them just appear like normal men. They look human and you will not be able to tell, especially when lust is leading the way. When human emotions lead the way, the spirit will not be able to reach you. Why do you think when people are in sexual sin and you try to talk to them, they want to bite your head off and make a thousand reasons to justify that God knows their heart? Sexual sin messes up all the signals. That's why the Bible says, do not awaken love before the time. Once the flesh gets involved, the spirit is subjugated, means it is put under, it is resisted. It is told, shoo, 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 shoo. he's asking me for my number. That's even why people marry awry. 
because lust is leading them and the Holy Spirit is saying that is 25 years of a broken heart for you. I don't want that for you. And you're like, you, you don't know him like I do. Your mother is talking to you. God is talking to you through your grandmother's voice. And you're just like, you don't understand him. And then you get in the house with that unsaved person. Even the unmarried women, you think that men are projects. You think you can pick up an unrenewed man and then you in your eveness will renew the Adam because that's what the Bible told you is the godly covenant that a man who doesn't love God is going to love God because you love God. You don't know that joining, joining forces with him is just him coming because he's the head. He's the Adam. I don't care how much you love God. You will come under that unsaved roof and the spirits in him will beat you down. You will, be, you will be singing what a friend we have in Jesus by yourself. You will be in quiet fortitude and sorrow by yourself. You went and made the covenant and you will sit in it. This is what lack of wisdom brings us. This is what not letting Jesus lead brings us. And it's not like he's not tender and it's not like he's like not kind, but it's also not his design for women to live that way. But many women take these sorrows to themselves because they are led by the outer. And the Bible says, if you are led by the outer, whether it's outer attracted to him or your own outer burning out of control, then you will reap the corruption. The years, the tiredness, the what do I do with these children? Children with a father who does not love God are not going to follow you because the godly order is not for the woman to lead. It will be hard you're signing up for hard labor, breaking rocks to get them to love Jesus Christ. You're struggling and you don't know why, because you are out of the godly order. Now you need to go and ask for more grace. They cloak themselves. They appear human. They pretend they can look like your own family member. They come to you as what you love. I shared in one of the UFO prof prophecies that these aliens pull data out of us. And then people began to challenge me. What are you saying? The, 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 are you saying the aliens know our hearts? You, you don't know that Facebook knows your heart. You think that the ads that appear on your Facebook page are by error. Facebook can't read you. Facebook has put a profile together. They know what you like to buy and what you like to eat. Facebook, it is an algorithm put together by some five-year-olds who have big titles. Facebook knows you. All the apps on your phone know you, but then the devil who is spirit and wicked and cunning, you think he by spiritual means cannot discern what is going on in us. These creatures pull the likeness of those that you have loved and they put on the face and come back. I have spoken of these examples many times that if you have loved someone and lost them and they show up at the door, you had better break out into your hottest rebuking prayers because you know that the Bible says that it is appointed for man to die once. They come back and say, oh, you know, they, they worked something out. You better start muttering and rebuking and sending that thing back where it came from. Loved ones who are two states, five states, 10 states away, loved ones in another country just show up at the door, no call, no email, no nothing. You need to check with Jesus who that is. And so, just a moment, please. He says, they look like your family member and it's a favorite trick of theirs. They look like a humble child. So you'll be seeing these little children. I don't know where my mommy is. Well, you need to ask God before you go and try to figure out where mommy is because mommy may be a crocodile half a block away or the child may be the crocodile a lost youth in need of help or an elder in need of assistance. And I will just share briefly here a dream because I spoke today of these, um, these creatures, these very big lizards. I do not know if those lizards have female forms, females of them, the ones that I have seen, there are massive, massive lizard people. And I'm saying it. Yes, I'm saying it with all my education. I put that down. I lay that down. All the reputation, everything, I lay it down because the Lord has shown it to me and I simply state what I have seen. I dreamt that I took a, 
a vacation. So it definitely had to be a dream. I dreamt that I took a vacation. I went to one of these nice, um, you know, places that are not in the city. They're, they're, you know, they have woods and everything and it's nice and outdoorsy and you can just be there with nature. And I was so happy being in that place. I thought, wow, uh, a whole week in this place, I'm going to make the most of it. It was maybe a week or a little bit more, but in no time I figured out when the breakfast menu, lunch menu, dinner menu was. I went down, I checked what it is that I liked, you know, and I was sampling the breakfast. And by the second or the third day, you would think that I had been in that hotel for eight years. People would check in and they would come in and I'd be the one going, you have to try the this and this, it's wonderful. Yes, so I was doing all this in the dream but in real life, God has told me that that is how people die. So that is not generally how I move in this world. You mind your business and I will surely mind mine. And so um, I would recommend this and recommend that. And by the second day, a lady came up to me and she was saying, oh, hello, you know, and she took her breakfast and we sat at the same table and we were talking. And um, in a very short time, I think by the lunch time, when I saw this woman again, she began to ask me these very pointed questions about myself, very personal things. And I quickly snapped up a defense and I rebuked her. And I said, why are you asking me these questions? Because I'm thinking, are you with these letter agencies? Who are you? And so I said, why are you asking me these very personal questions? I do not know you. And I raised my voice in the dining hall and I took my food and I marched away from this woman and I sat at another table and I glared at her to let her know you are not welcome around me anymore. And uh, by nightfall, I didn't see this woman ever again. So it appeared that she checked out of the hotel just as suddenly as she had appeared, she disappeared. But then another man checked in and what a sweetheart, an older man, you know, you see him at the checkout desk asking, you know, um, I'd like to go for a walk, but I don't know which of the nature trails. And I was there like, oh, hello, you know, um, I've hiked these two and this one was definitely easier, but this one has a nicer view, but don't try this third one. It's very tough. And so he just said, oh, thank you, dear. And then I would see him in the breakfast place and we would chat. And then I just thought this dear, dear old man, and he was just so sweet and kind. And I think it was dinner. It was dinner. He came and he shared um, a, a space with me and we were talking. And by this time I'd been there for about six or seven days now, shared a space with me and we were talking. And as we were talking, reality glitched. So I'm not saying that the whole reality of the whole world glitched. No, this man was making his own reality. He was bending the reality around him. He was not an old man. He was literally bending the air around him and it created old man shape, old man voice, old man kindness. This thing was a 12 foot working out bodybuilder lizard being huge scales, like big scales. I, I don't, I've never seen maybe big. I've never seen anything but a gecko. I've never seen these other lizards that people love. Gila monsters and these other horn lizards, you know, these attacking looking lizards. I've never seen one of those in real life. I've only seen these small slithery pale types that grow back their tail. So to see, God just had mercy on me to see that thing. And this is now where spiritual gift, right? Galatians 5, constantly talking about it on this channel. People always ask, how will we fight them? How good are you at, you, are you at just having the basics in, in your life? How, how is your kindness? How is your endurance? How is your self-control? Now I'm sitting and the old man suffers a crack in his reality because Jesus is good. And Jesus thinks, well, look at this one doing everything I have told her not to do crack in that man's reality. And I saw that lizard with its yellow up and down snaky eyes gazing at me with so much interest, the way a cobra looks at the white mice that you put in the cobra cage. And it's thinking, well, let me observe you before I eat you. That is what that thing was doing behind that old man cloud. And I just, I said, you know, I think that I've left my room unlocked. So unlike me. I will be right back. And the old man smiled and said, of course, dear. 
and I left. But the problem with humanity is that when we are scared, composure can help, but you cannot stop your body's femorones. And that fear must have told that thing. She's onto me somehow, even though her face has not shown it. I went out the dining hall and the minute that glass door, the minute I was out of sight of that glass door, I began to sprint down this hallway. Somehow with God, it's always a hallway and I'm running in the hallway. I'm repenting because that's the first thing. You're not going to start blaming God for your own lack of wisdom. I am repenting. You told me not to talk to people. You told me not to engage with those I don't know. You told me not everybody is a person. Now here I am with old man, reptile, 12 foot bodybuilder. Lord, deliver me from this. I am looking for a bellboy, looking for a porter, looking for my room, running, running, running. And this thing completely forgets about pretending and starts coming down the hallway after me in its huge, the tail of this thing is like the body of an alligator by itself, just the tail alone running after me. And as it's running after me, I'm running. And what do I get? I get a vision of the lady who left a few days ago. Vision projects here as I'm running with the thing behind me. And what do I see in the vision? I see that the woman was nothing human. I see her taking her suitcase and walking down the driveway, which is odd because to get to this place, you need to have driven there. So I see her walking down the driveway, walking past the tree line. And as soon as she goes past the tree line, she dips off into the trees. This woman is walking with a small suitcase. She's walking with either a camera bag or something else, maybe a laptop bag. She has a hat on and then she has clothing. I watch as this woman puts the bag down and stands and everything that she was holding morphs into one thing. I cannot remember what that thing was. So all the external, I'm talking about clothes. Is it possible for all this stuff to morph into me? Of course not. These are all separate from me. Everything that she had, it was all her. She was some kind of matter that made woman, made a hat, a sun hat, made a camera bag, made a suitcase, and made herself. All of it just fused back into whatever she was. And then it was no longer there. I'm sitting here a solid form. And I'm telling you of the places that God takes me. I'm telling you of the things that God shows me. I'm telling you a reality that 99.9% .9 of humanity, I don't care what university they think they've gone to. I don't care how many years they have in ministry are not prepared for it. Because when the day comes, when the pedal goes to the metal, in every continent, when people around us start going Ugh, and stretching finally free of what the Bible calls the restrainer, this is when Christians will no longer argue about who the restrainer was. You will automatically know that the restrainer is the person of the Holy Spirit that presses down upon these beings and keeps them locked in place. So that even the wickedness that they do, even some of the people that they abduct, the little people that go missing, it's kept to a very low number. When the restrainer stops restraining, why? Because 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 9 and 10, that the coming of the lawless one, the lawless one has been given his hour, his hour must come. And when he comes, he that restrains shall restrain no longer. That is when all the barnyard friends this is when you're going to be sitting on your porch with two houses on either side of your apartment, sitting on your porch. He's going to be mowing the lawn and she's going to be watering flowers. And just like that, something will roll back over the world and your neighbor is going to go, Arr! and you will think, what? Was that a wolf howl? And you'll try to look at the other neighbor to confirm only to find her answering back, Arr, ar, ar. That's what's going to happen. We're going to find a huge, huge mass of us are not people. And they will come out just like that. And so it's no wonder that my heart is heavy because people have children out there 
And this is not anything that anyone wants to hear, but we will have to hear it. As long as God thinks that I should hear it, I should see it, I'm going to be faithful to bring it out. And I will stop the video here. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. You can subscribe to the channel. Just click on uh, the channel's name. Please note that it's only my channel if you can see the black background over the name, the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog. So you can click that and then it will take you to my main page and then you can click subscribe. And then if you click a second time, then you'll get a notification every time I make a video. Please understand that YouTube is very actively unsubscribing people, very actively working against the likes that you leave on the channel. Even on the Rumble channel, people have complained to me so many times that they clicked the Rumble button and then they saw the thumbs up being turned to a thumbs down in front of them. None of these sites are impartial. None of them are the so-called freedom platforms that people think they are. So we might as well use them with wisdom because we know they are just for the time being. The time will come, you cannot watch a channel like this because the, a channel like this will not be tolerated. So it's best to get the information now. So God bless you. And if I can do another video today, I shall. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.